Welcome to Sonata Secrets, Unlocking the World of Classical Music. I'm so happy to present a piece by a Swedish composer, Wilhelm Stenhammer. In this video, I'm going to talk about his fantasy number one in B minor. So Wilhelm Stenhammer was born 1871 and died 1927. And in his prime time, he was chief conductor of Gothenburg Symphony Orchestra, my hometown. And we still have the chamber music room in the concert hall is called Stenhammer Room. And he was also a pianist. So he was combining touring as a pianist and conducting and composing. So he did a lot of things. And he didn't write so much piano music. There are a few sonatas and then there are two separate sets of pieces. One is called Late Summer Nights, that's five pieces, quite short. And then we have this set of three fantasies. And his style of piano playing is very Brahmsian. It's very wide range for the hands, like Rachmaninoff, because Stenhammer had gigantic hands himself. He could reach, like, I've heard, an octave and a fifth or something like that. So you notice in the score when he writes that it's quite hard and big for the hand. And I would also say that he's in the German tradition of writing where the motivic elements has a primary role for developing the structure of the music. However, in a fantasy like this, it's more free in the conception. It's not as strict as a sonata. But as we will see, the motivic elements has an important function to play. So the main theme is really powerful, like an epic film score. And then there are some beautiful lyrical sections that acts as counterparts to it. And in there, there is an element of a Nordic folklore that I don't really know exactly how to explain, but it's a special feeling of the Nordic soul, I think. And a special thank you and shout out to my patron Sidan in this video. Sidan was my first patron on the Sonata tier. Check it out at patreon.com slash sonata secrets. Okay, so here we go. Fortissimo, molto appassionato, very passionate. I mean, that's a way to start a piece. Really uh, great to play this piece, yeah, just these thick diminished chords. And resolving a lot of tension in this. And then uh, increasing the speed here. We end up down here with the B minor. And then we have the first main theme, uh, a very heroic theme with this uh, open fifth interval. It's like the call to adventure. And we, it goes back to B minor. And the texture here, it's typical Stenhammer. It's very thick and dense in the low register with a lot of notes, but it just chords in arpeggios. And we use the pedal, but it shouldn't be too much pedal, so it drowns out the melody, the adventure melody. So really loud on the melody, and then really soft on the complement, at least in the beginning, so. I actually played this on the grand piano that Stenhammer himself played a uh, hundred years ago. It's an old Beckstein and it was placed in the old concert house in Gothenburg. But then, I think in 1928, the whole concert hall burnt down because it was made of wood. Um, but somehow they managed to rescue the piano, a heroic feature, uh, maybe took it out the window or something. Uh, so that piano is still alive and it now stands in a order house in Gothenburg and I played for that order uh, as a private concert and it's something with a Beckstein kind of a light touch in the low and uh, middle and low register so it's kind of easy to get this sound really nice because on a modern Steinway it's easy to get too powerful here but so I can understand how it made sense for Stenhammer to write it in this way 
because like all his music is kind of thick and hard to get sometimes. Okay, and then we get a repeat of the theme with the doubling octave higher up. Okay, and then the second part of the theme, we've gone up now and now we're going down and it's more melody and legato, uh, forte dolce, so sweet, it's a sweet melody, it's still forte uh, and goes like this. And it's repeated one octave lower now instead. And there's also some nice counterpoint here. So it's two melodies in the right hand. Let me just play the two of them. It's the top one and then the one below goes down. And then with the accompaniment and uh, nice arpeggios as well. so deep and thick and it's hard to make out the melody. Okay, and now this is kind of the third part of uh, the first section. Now we go up again uh, and with this motif. So it's just the same motif repeated over and over again uh, in a rising ascent. Um, and over diminished chord. And finally it reaches a nice major chord, the C sharp, C -sharp major. Okay, and now we reach the fortissimo and now we're going down again from a high position. And slowing down and the energy is kind of coming down and then we get the second theme which is a lyrical melody uh, it could be like a song he said I wrote a lot of songs so uh, this is like an inspiration, cantabile. And it comes in D major, which is the relative key to B minor. But since we end up on F sharp minor here, it feels like... So it feels like a mediant coming from F sharp minor to D major instead of B minor to D major. This is a nice, it's like a ninth chord. Cadence. And then we get the melody repeated one octave up, same as the first theme. Oh, dolcissimo, very, super sweetly. This is a nice surprise, so we're expecting go back to D major with this A dominant chord. But as a surprise, Stenhammer throws in the B flat major chord instead. So that's called a mediant, where you share the same, uh, you share one note of the chord, that's the D is the same. We're kind of continuing 
developing harmonically here. Uh, it's not really clear where, but it's going forward. To minor and diminished. And it kind of just stops here, up in the air, on this diminished chord, very unsure uh, of what's happening. So ritardando, and then we turn the page, it's just the first theme again, the heroic theme comes straight on. And it says forte in the music, and you can do a forte. But I actually like to do the opposite, to start piano, so you don't notice it really, and then you realize it's the real theme, so... So then when we reach the doubling octave of the theme, we're in forte and fortissimo. Lovely uh, melody in legato. So this is basically a whole repeat of the whole theme, uh, pretty much exactly the same. So let me just go to the end of this, where we go a new way. So. And now, before we went to F sharp minor, but this time... We go to F sharp major instead, so that's another surprise. And, so, and also, before it uh, died out in the high register, now we go crescendo up in the high register instead. I still take a lot of time to prepare because then we get the second theme, the lyrical theme, uh, still in piano and soft. Uh, and it's a really nice effect when you go... Piano. So it's basically the same theme, it's just in B major instead of D major as before. And also it's, uh, the accompaniment is more busy with triplets instead of eighth notes as before. And it gets increasingly harder to play this piece the further you go with it. So the triplets is pretty okay. So the idea is here, poco meno ma agitato is slightly less but agitated. So we're starting now a big return to like the biggest climax uh, to the end of the piece, we're approaching the end soon. So we're, but it's still the lyrical theme, very nice melodies, but you can discern that something is going on underneath here. So più agitato, more agitated. Now we get the hard part here. Uh, it's 16th notes, arpeggio, and this kind of looks a bit like the accompaniment texture for the main theme. That's no coincidence. So now we're starting to recognize it. Median surprise uh, thing here. And sempre più agitato, always more agitated. So the progression. And these are some new chords, like we're consolidating the energy here uh, in the high register.
So here we get the heroic theme for the third time in the piece and uh, uh, it's the biggest climax, the loudest. Uh, 3F forte fortissimo in petoso is like uh, pushing forward in some way and it's uh, also in a higher register, the highest uh, with octaves high up. Yeah. And then we get the same lovely melody here. So instead of just repeating it one octave down, we get it in a kind of a modulation harmony surprise here. So instead of, that's the two times before, now the third time. It's so nice. And we continue with a new modulation thing. And again, and now he's just repeating this uh, as a sequence, one note higher every time. Until we reach here and this, so it grows into these chords as the beginning of the piece, so they come back to close down the piece. just take all the energy and put it in the piano as the final chords. It's really hard to with these chord jumps because it's big jumps and it just keeps jumping. Yay, I managed to place them there. It's not a lot of times in concerts uh, it sounds something like this. But <laughs> as long as you play this it's okay. So the B minor fantasy isn't too complicated from a structural perspective. Uh, we have the heroic theme and the lyrical theme and they repeat and they use a lot of these motivic elements that are repeated in sequence up and down. And throughout the piece is a lot of mediants going through different harmonies in mediant relationships. Now please enjoy when I play through Stenhammer's fantasy in B minor. Subscribe if you're new here and let me know what you think about Stenhammer's music or this piece in the comment section below.
Thank you for watching Sonata Secrets. Check out my other videos and also check out patreon.com slash sonatasecrets for my premium subscription model.